Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, in our last session, we have started or we discuss about the fragments. Okay, so fragment is also known as the sub activity, you can say that, right? And fragment is designed on the top of activity. So there are two types of conversation will be possible with the fragments. Either you can call fragment from the activity or second one is you can also communicate from one fragment to another fragment. So if time permits, then today we will see both the examples. OK, because we have already covered the theory session in last lecture. OK. So let's quickly revise the use of fragments. So the main use of fragments in Android is modularity, reusability and adaptability, right? So it doesn't depend on the screen resolution, screen size. It will adapt whatever screen size you have and it will behave according to that, right? And uh, after that, we have also discussed about the types of Android fragments. And we have also discussed about the Android fragment lifecycle and methods. So before jumping on to the particular practical example, uh, I want to discuss one important component of fragment that will be useful in our programming also, that fragment manager. So what is the meaning of fragment manager? So every activity has its own fragment manager. Right. So here the fundamental is within a single activity, you can create multiple fragments. OK, so how you can who is the responsible to manage that particular fragment? So there is a one fragment manager that will manage all the fragments and it will maintain the reference of all the fragments inside the activity. Now, how you can identify how that fragment manager will identify the particular fragments. So there is a one method you can use. It is known as the find fragment by ID, right? So with the use of this method, you can get the particular reference of the any fragment. Okay, so uh, this was this is a very uh, important component. So I want to discuss with you. Now let's jump on to the particular example. OK, so how you can create a fragment and uh, how you can achieve the communication between activity to fragment or fragment to fragment. So first of all, uh, we are going to discuss the application that will call a fragment from the activity. Right, so here you basically need to understand how to create a fragment, right? The rest of the things we have already discussed. OK, so whenever you create a new project, so first of all, you will have activity main and main activity dot Java file, right? Don't worry about this logic. It is very easy. Once I explain you, you are able to do the coding by yourself. Now in this particular thing, if you go into the activity or you can go into the particular XML file or design section, we have a two buttons. So this is our activity XML file. So now here in this example, we are calling fragment from the activity. So I need to create two buttons from the activity. So fragment one and fragment two. Here I have used the constraint layouts Side by side, I am also going to explain you the layouts. That is our third unit, but it is very much necessary. So I'm covering it side by side and all the controls, right? Now in design, you can see that these particular buttons are equally distributed. So you can see here chain kind of thing. Here you can see the chain kind of thing, right? So this is a part of constraint layout. It is known as the chain, right? So now how you can create the chain between two components? So you have to select both of the buttons, right click on it and chains, and you can create horizontal chain. So you can create horizontal chain or if your components are there, you can also create a vertical chain. And in that chain also you can uh, 
provide the particular property. Okay. So once you create a horizontal chain that your components will be equally distributed. See the size, the gap between all that is equally distributed. Now here you can see that it shows the margin of 8 dB, right? So here I have defined the margin from the top and the left 8. That's why it is showing that 8, okay? Now this is about the design portion. <clears throat> now how, how this particular frame, you can see here, you can see that one square box is coming. You can also, that's why I have opened the blueprint over here. And in a blueprint, you can see that it is known as the FL underscore fragment. So this is our fragment. This is our fragment. So there are two ways to create a fragment. Okay. So let me again jump into the code section. So one way is a static fragment creation. So this particular code I have created, uh, commented. So this will create a individual fragments statically, right? Suppose I want to create another fragment, then I just need to go for fragment and I can create it, okay? But I want to dynamically create a fragment at the runtime because what happens over here, in a single activity, I want to open two fragments. So instead of creating a static fragment scenario, I'm going for the dynamic. So whenever I click on a fragment one button in our design, then it will display the particular fragment one over here. And when I click on a fragment two, then it will display the fragment two over here, right? Now, the next thing is here, if you want to go for the dynamic way of creation, then you have to convert your fragment into frame layout. Okay, this is necessary. And you have to provide the particular ID of the frame layout. Okay, and if you want to go for a static creation of a fragment, then here you have to compulsory provide the name of that particular fragment. Remember this, it is very important guys, right? So whenever you create a static fragment, you have to compulsory provide the name over here of that particular fragment. And when you go for a dynamic way, then you have to convert your fragment into frame layout. Then you don't need to provide any name to that. It will be remembered by the ID of itself. Okay, now the second thing is, this is about the uh, particular, our, okay. This is about the particular or main activity of design. Now, how to add the fragment? We have created a fragment, but fragment, I told you itself a sub activity. It is also known as the sub activity. So how to create, a fragment, how to add a fragment. It is a very simple guys. Here, wherever your Java file is there, here you just need to right click, new, and then you have to go to the fragment and you have to create a blank fragment. Okay, so here I'm giving a name, third fragment, okay? So automatically your layout file is also going to be created, fragment underscore third. Okay, and when you click on a finish, then two files are going to be added. One is here your Java file. Another one is here is your layout file. So this way I have created two fragments. So first fragment dot Java, fragment underscore first dot XML. Second fragment dot Java, fragment underscore second dot XML. Okay, so these two files are created now. If I go to the first fragment and if I see the design, there, there is only one text view. So in this example, I just only, uh, I just only want to display a message that is known as the first fragment. And in a second, again, I'm just, I'm just here 
displaying the name of that particular fragment. That's it, right? So here you can see we have dot XML file. So you can add the components over here. Here I have added only text view. You can create a login page. You can add some tree. Uh, you can say list, checkbox, radio button. You can create a register page, whatever you want, right? So as I gave you the example of Instagram, so the bottom buttons are, uh, you can say when you click on a search button or you can, uh, uh, if you click on a heart button, then it will show you the activities and all that. So if you want to do, then you can design that such page and you can connect that with the heart symbol button. Now, this is my simple design. You can see uh, first fragment or Java. So this is the auto generated code. This is the auto generated code. You don't need to worry about it. All this is auto generated. Here we are not writing any logic in a fragment files. So that's why I'm keep it, keeping it as it is. In a second also you can see it is auto generated code. You don't need to worry, worry about. I have not written a single line of this. When you add the fragment, then it will be automatically added. Okay, in second example, we will remove this code and we'll see how to write the logic. Okay, so this is the part of design. Now, what I want to perform, the, I want to perform that when I click on a single button, that, that is fragment one, it will display fragment like when I click on a heart shape, then it will display the fragment of heart shape. And when I click on a fragment two button, then it will display the fragment button. Okay. So for that, I just need to write the logic. So what logic I need to write over here. So first of all, the necessary things you have to perform, like you have to assign the IDs and names and whatever you want. Okay. To identify that particular button. So I directly jump onto the activity.java file. So in this file, first of all, I need to create the reference and then object, right? As I told you that in a newer version, this is not necessary, but if you add, then it will come in the gray button, right? Here also on new, on click listener is also a particular optional. You can replace it with the Lambda. So it will come in a single line. See, this is the beauty of Lambda function. The whole function is converted. This many lines are converted into a single line. See guys, this is the beauty of this is the power of Lambda function, right? How to create that? You just go to the here and replace with the Lambda function. So now the whole bunch of lines are converted into single line. It is very easy, right? But right now for the explanation purpose, I'm just removing that now. Once I have created the reference object of the button, then I just need to set on click listener because when I want to click, then I want to perform something. This is known as the event handling in Android. Now here on click event is going to be called when I click on a button. So what I want to do. So with the use of set fragment function, you can set the particular fragment. So you remember here we are setting a fragment dynamically, right? So what I need to do, I need to call set fragment function and I need to pass the first fragment reference into that. Similarly, when I call a second button, then I just need to pass the second fragment reference into the set fragment function. Now, what set fragment function will perform? You have to pass fragment as an argument because we have a multiple fragments and we are passing fragment as a reference. So you have to compulsory pass fragment over here, right? Now, here is the role of fragment manager. Now, how your fragment manager uh, here performs the role to identify a particular fragment, right? So a fragment manager object I need to create and I need to call get support fragment manager, get support fragment manager. So what it will do, it will return the fragment manager for interacting with 
fragments associated with this activity so what is the job of get support fragment manager to identify which fragment is right now interacting or connecting it will return it now once i identify the fragment what i need to perform i need to perform some modifications like you can add the fragment you can remove the fragment and you can replace the fragment and this particular operations you can achieve with the use of fragment transactions right so two things you have to remember over here guys first is a fragment manager another one is the fragment transaction what is the role of fragment manager it is used to communicate with the fragment object inside the activity and what is the role of fragment transaction then it is used to perform operations like add remove and replace so here we want to replace the particular fragment right because when i click on a one button then one fragment is going to be display when i click on a second button then first one is replaced by the second one right so that will be taken care by the fragment manager object, object we have already created and we have passed the argument over here that is the job of it now with the use of replace function of the fragment transaction you can replace the fragment now you have to identify the context right now we are in a frame layout so fl underscore fragment this is frame layout the name of my particular you can say layout here frame layout fl underscore fragment okay so i want to replace it with what i want to replace it with the particular fragment so the here is the fragment argument i have passed so whenever i click on a first button it will pass the first fragment argument so it will be replaced by the first whenever i click on a second button then it will pass the argument reference for the second fragment and it will replace with the second so this way with the use of this frame layout you can replace you can modify the fragments dynamically at the run time right so it is up to the choice of developer or it is up to the uh, requirement so how you want to design the fragment after performing this operations you have to commit it right so here whenever a transaction is finished then you have to commit it so it returns the identifier of transactions back stack entry so i told you last time the back stack entry right so replaced fragments are when you click on a back button then for last one is removed when you click again back button then second last is removed like that so you have to uh, call this commit method compulsory to execute our operation right that's it guys so by writing this simple piece of code only i have modified main activity dot java file remember over here right i have not written any logic in fragment files so after doing this after designing the ui and after writing this many uh, this much code you are able to execute the code right so now let's execute the code and see what happens with us okay right so this is our main activity dot java file right so in that i have only designed two buttons rest of the thing is carried out by the frame layout fragment so when i click on a fragment one then a fragment one occupies the space in a frame layout and it will display first fragment when i click on a fragment two then it will be replaced then it will be replaced by the second fragment dynamically at the run time right so 